Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of these two knives right here. This is the Protec Half Breed up top here, and the Protec Sprint down in the bottom here. And I'm actually going to review the two of these guys together because they are essentially the same knife except just with different handle sizes. The blades are, for all intents and purposes, identical. In fact, the Half Breed itself is the um, blade from the Protec Sprint mixed with a Protec Neutron, uh, not Neutron, um, the Newport uh, handle on there, and so. So, uh, in effect, they're going to be uh, roughly the same, and so I'll talk about the differences where it's relevant, but I figured it would just be a better idea to review them all at once and save you guys a little bit of time. Uh, but first off, actually, I want to thank my buddy Dean over at Hellacious Blades over in York, uh, York South Carolina, not York. Uh, it's a different place, I imagine. Um... But anyways, he helped me out by sending these guys along uh, at a great price, so thank you very much for that, Dean. Um, next thing, uh, size comparison. Uh, here this is against the uh, Protec Halfbreed and Protec Sprint. There you go. Um, here it is against the Protec Runt, another small California legal sort of knife here. Um, so you can take a look at that. Here it is against the uh, Spydeco Delica. Here we go. And so you can see both of these are actually not very large. Even the half breed with the larger handle is going to be smaller than the Delica when folded or, frankly, when unfolded. Um, and blade length-wise, they are very, very small. They are under two inches. In fact, that is a main selling point. Um, here it is against the Ontario Rat number one and the Ontario Rat number two. And so, again, these are small, tiny little freaking blades here. And then against the uh, Spydeco Rhino, because it happens to be on my table right now. And, you know, why the heck not, right? So, anyway. Anyways, um, there's your size comparison. Next thing to note, both of these knives are automatic knives. That means you press this button on the handle and boom, blade comes flying out of there. This is important, um, both, you know, for some accessibility reasons, etc., but more importantly, this is a legal issue in many, many, many places in the world. Um, there are the, the, there are states in the U.S., there are countries in the world that ban this knife entirely. This is a scary, oh my god, death murder weapon to them because they are scared of the universe and needed something to uh, project that upon. But anyways, um, that is an unfortunate simple fact, but the, the, the fact is that in Michigan, it's been legal to carry one of these since October of 2017. Thank you to Knife Rights very much for uh, getting that past. But in other places in the country, if I were to drive 40 minutes south, um, this would become a felony. So keep that in mind. Know your local jurisdictions before you try and order an automatic knife. Um, then finally, uh, one other quick note. Uh, two other quick notes. Um, you may remember that there was a Protec Halfbreed with a blue handle that was on my table at one point in time. Um, and I, I showed it off on Instagram. I even did a live disassembly. Unfortunately, the review and disassembly for that were lost. And so, uh, to the, the ravages of entropy. And so I'm just doing these two together. Um, picked up another one here for the uh, comparison. And then finally, there is just one disassembly video here. Because practically speaking, these two knives work the same in terms of disassembly. It's just a question of where the screws are positioned. So, um, anyways, there you go. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your Protec Halfbreed and uh, Sprint right here. So, um, first off on the good side, I do like the little blade here. Um, for a couple of reasons. I mean, to start with, um, it is S35VN steel. That's great. And in fact, it's kind of a step up relative to a lot of what Protec is running. They've often used uh, 154CM, which is a fine steel, but S35 I like more. But more importantly, I think the fact that you've got a, a nice little blade here. It's a good shape. It works very well, especially for utility sorts of cutting, and it's also ground well to cut. You can see here, well, maybe you can see here, it is relatively thin behind the edge. Uh, it comes to a nice acute point here. This is a good blade. I enjoy carrying this blade, and it works very well, and it's much better ground than, for instance, the Runt, which is uh, a lot thicker behind the edge, uh, and, and frankly, uh, the, the, the grind on it is just not as, I, I don't know. So I, I really do like the blade on this guy, and also this guy's in 154 CM. So, uh, there you go. And I'll have a video comparing these three, by the way, uh, soonish. So there you go. Next thing, um, the price on these guys is actually fine. Um, both of these, actually, this exact edition of the Sprint and this exact edition of the Half-Breed come out to 120 bucks. Um, 120 bucks for a made in the USA, by the way, that's, that's nice, made in the USA, um, automatic knife that is of pretty good quality. I don't see that being a problem. Um, you can actually get a Sprint that is cheaper if you're willing to, uh, forego the inlay and whatnot. Uh, I think they go down to 104, but you know what? I got no problem with the price, and also, it's a weird knife. I mean, it would be very easy for Protec to basically take advantage of Californians, even though they are Californians, so, uh, but nonetheless, uh, and then just say, you know, okay, we're gonna charge a million dollars for this, because we're not gonna sell many of them, and you're buying one anyways, um, but that, that, I like that very much. Next thing, um, you can see here that the, uh, the deployment button here 
is inside this little groove. And what that basically means is that even if I press down on this table, which is a softer surface, there is no way that I can deploy, and I'm putting substantial force into this table here, there's no way that the bl uh, blade deploys. But with a thumb, which is pointed, I can get in there and deploy the blade 100% reliably. That's a nice little safety measure. It's something that I occasionally see missing in button autos, and it always terrifies the crap out of me. So uh, that, that, that's good. Next thing, clips. Clips on these guys are good to go. The uh, half breed, I'm sorry, yeah, the half breed has a much larger clip, and actually I like a large clip. A large clip tends to uh, really control the knife well, and especially on a larger knife like this, and you know what? Both of these clips actually work very, very well. The half breeds clip is going to be a little bit better for uh, you know bigger pockets. I'm uh, sorry, thicker pockets. So you've got more ramp and you've got more space here. But both of them are good deep carry clips, and they're done well. And that you can see here that the screws are entirely recessed underneath there. It's not the case that you've got a deep carry clip that is. Uh, Oh, do I have a bad deep carry clip on my table? Uh, yeah, here's one. Um, this is a ZT452. You can see the screws are going right up into the path, so really your, your pants can only get to about here. That's a lot less deep than this guy is. And so especially, you know, in a knife designed for dealing with people who are scared of the world, having something that carries very deeply and innocuously, maybe even a pen or something like that, is kind of a beautiful thing. Um, and so that's great. Next thing, ergonomically speaking, actually both of these work. I have smaller hands than most. Uh, little person hands, if you prefer. Um, and the, 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 the thing is, um, even though I'm not a small person, just saying. Uh, but anyways, this works pretty well in my hand. I have a solid three-finger grip on this guy. My thumb falls into a nice position, although I could also go with a hammer grip, although it's weird on something this small. And the, the deep, clear, uh, deep carry clip actually helps to fill the hands pretty well. The half-breed, I think, is even more ergonomic because here you get a real a good full four-finger grip on this guy. Both of these work pretty well in the hand and give me more than enough to, to be able to control this. There's a lot to be said for having a big handle on a smaller blade just because it makes it a lot easier to ma manipulate, to use it, to, to apply force as you're cutting and to do so in a really directed way. But both of these work pretty well for me and I'm actually a big fan of the ergos on both of these. Um, I imagine this would probably be too small for a lot of people though, so I'll uh, keep that one in mind. Um, next thing, the action on these guys is great. Um, absolutely easily deploys. Um, 100%. You press the button every damn time, it will fire reliably. Even if it runs into something, it'll still find its way home afterwards once that it's let up. I mean, it's absolutely great. Um, but there's also not too much spring to bring it back one-handed. No problem at all. You can close this guy pretty straightforwardly without having to, re you know, you know, sh clamp it shut there, right? So that's very good. And the button lock is, of course, a very effective system and a very nice system. Frankly, I, I like button locks a lot, and they're very, very snappy. They feel automatic, especially this little guy with a relatively lightweight body. This guy fires like crazy. So I appreciate very much that. Next thing, one advantage of an out the, or I'm sorry, of a side fire auto rather than an out the front automatic like uh, this little guy here. This guy, the only way you can deploy it uh, is by pressing the button forward and letting the blade come flying out. Um, whereas on this guy, what you can do is, it, let's say you're in the lunchroom and you're surrounded by somebody who you think, okay, this person might be a little scared of an automatic knife. So what you do is you just put your fingers right here and then you pinch the knife open. I just hit the thumb button to deploy it, let it catch my fingers, pop it open. Then it just looks like a good old-fashioned slip joint, just like Gramps had. But then later on, if you're, you know, a lower and better, you know, different company, you can always just pop it out, use it as normal. So it's nice that you have that option, particularly in a knife that's designed to basically cater to the scared. Um, this is a, a really nice approach, so that's good. Um, the construction on both of these is very good. Um, there is one exception, I'll talk about that in the ugly, but uh, the, the, these are well-made overall. I'm very happy with that. And then finally, I appreciate very much the fact that you've got the two options here. Um, you have... Uh, for people with larger hands, the half breed, which gives you a Cali Legal Auto that is absolutely great in any hand size and feels better than either the runt or the sprint uh, in the hand. So if you've got big hands but happen to live in California and want an auto, the half breed is absolutely going to be a choice for you. But on the other hand, you do have the Sprint here, which is both really good for people with relatively smaller hands, but also is ridiculously easy to carry. This knife has no flipper tab. It is small. It is canted off to the side. This is the knife in my collection that is perhaps the easiest of all to carry because it's also very, very lightweight. The handles on it are aluminum. It's a relatively thin stock steel blade. Um, I mean, seriously, this comes in at 1.6 ounces. Holy crap, guys. Um, and so this is just such a damn pleasure to carry. It is so easy to throw this in the pocket. Um, and so I, I love that we have that as an option here, both for the larger hands and for the smaller hands or the smaller pockets. Both of those 
a great. And the fact that we've got the option is really excellent. So thank you for that, ProTech. And that wraps up the good here, is that they, they, they I love having the option here. They're nicely constructed. Um, oh, they're easily disassemblable. I forgot to mention that. Even though it avoids warranty, I will mention that later. They can be stealthily deployed by uh, catching the blade with your fingers. Um, it has a great action, uh, works well ergonomically, great clip, button groove for safety on here. Um, the price is fine, and they have a very nice little blade. To me, though, on the great side, I love the fact that these knives exist. Um, it, they, they're a little bit goofy, particularly the half-breed. You pull this out and people are like, wait, what? Um, but the thing is, I love that they're doing this because not only does it work ergonomically speaking, but it is legal for a group of people who might not otherwise have options. California has weird automatic knife laws. Anything over, um, anything over, what am I trying to say here? Oh, I'm sorry. Anything over two inches and automatic is absolutely banned in, in California. And so otherwise you wouldn't have any automatic options barring, you know, there are a couple of other ones out there, but they, they, these are really the most compelling ones. And so I love love the fact that they're, that they're willing to say, you know what, not only, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and make something for the Cali folks, but also, eh, screw it, let's make something weird for them too. Um, I love very much that. And the other thing to put, us, you know, completely aside, even if you're not in California, this particularly is an automatic knife that doesn't reach scary. Um, even if you deploy it naturally, people are gonna look at it like, oh, that's adorable. Um, it doesn't come across as, oh my God, crazy murder weapon, and especially with a uh, satin blade, even more so. Um, this is a really, really nice automatic for if you want the thrill of an automatic knife, although I gotta be honest, the thrill is not like, oh my God, roller coaster or anything like that. Um, but if you wanna have an automatic knife, but you don't have to worry about all the, uh, the, 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 the fear basically is the way to put it. So um, to me, that's what's great is that they've made a knife at this size, which is great for people in Cali and great for people who might be dealing with people who might be afraid of something a little bit bigger. Um, on the bad side, first off, um, obviously the blade to handle ratio on the half breed is a little bit hilarious, but that's kind of the point of it. So I can't really ding it for that. Next thing, both of these guys are using Protex Signature Black Aluminum, and it has that same sort of chalky feeling as like the Benchmade 940, as well as everything else Protec makes. Um, my problem with it is not so much functional, although it will show wear, but just like Protec, come on, variety. I mean, seriously, would it kill them to do blue or green or something like that? No, does everything have to be high-speed, low-drag black aluminum? No, it doesn't, but they think it does. It's freaking ugly. I'll mix it up a little bit there, Protec. Next thing, these guys are a little bit on the loud side if deployed manually. Yeah, this is definitely something you can hear, and it's a lot more audible in my estimation than a lot of your flipping knives, that kind of thing. So um, the, 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 the loudness is definitely a thing. And then finally, on the bad side, um, although I can't really beat them up too much for it, uh, this is a two-inch blade. That's kind of the point. I mean, if I measure this guy out, no matter how you're looking at it, this is going to come in at two inches here. A and that is um, not going to be enough blade for a lot of people, flat out. There are a lot of tasks in the world that a two-inch blade will not suffice for. Um, in my life, actually, I can get surprisingly far with it, and especially with this and a Leatherman in the backpack in case I need something a little bit longer. Um, I, uh, this will do for a lot, but uh, past a certain point, two inches is a real restriction. So um, you, you're going to want to keep that in mind. Sometimes this may not be enough, uh, and it may be a better idea if you're in California to go unautomatic and get something a little more reasonably sized. So that's the bad, is that two inches is just not enough blade sometimes, although that's kind of the point here. Um, it is kind of loud, uh, not a fan of the uh, black aluminum from Brotec. At least it's fine, but do something else, damn it. And um, the blade handle ratio on this guy is a little bit hilarious. Um, on the ugly front, there were two issues. Um, and I've, I've said this over and over again, and i felt this over and over again. The majority of Protex that I've gotten, in fact, all but one Protex that's come across my table, has shown side-to-side -side blade play out of the box, meaning the blade is able to wiggle back and forth a little bit uh, as you, you're handling it there. Um, every damn time, that seems to happen. And this just means that they are not assembling them properly because I can fix it. All you need to do is come in here with a freaking, what is it, uh you know, one sixteenth uh, hex bit and just tweak the pivot, tighten the pivot up a little bit. And there you go. Your blade plays fixed. That just means they're not doing the assembly right. They're not lubricating them. Well, I don't freaking know what they're doing. Um, but th th that's, that's just not a great thing. They need to get that right. And you can tighten them up and it'll be fine. But do this from the factory. The reason I'm beating up on them so much for this though, is that the warranty is voided by disassembly and maintenance from Protec. Anytime you take the knife apart, boom, goes your warranty. 
warranty. Now, putting aside the fact that this is probably a violation of the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, um, which I, I don't think has ever been tested in the knife world, but nonetheless, um, it is really, really unfortunate. Basically, what they're telling us here is that we're going to sell you a poorly put together knife, and then we're going to complain when you fix it yourself. They either need to be shipping perfection, make knives that I could not possibly improve in their assembly, or they need to let me fix it. Uh, I, you can't do both of those things. So Protec, get your assembly together and get your warranty together because the two of those together are a perfect storm of ugly. So that's the ugly. Um, on the final conclusion front, though, I gotta say, I like these. I think these are really neat little knives. You get a very nice size. You get a very effective little cutting tool, at least for a lot of tasks. You get a nice little action, and it gives somebody living in a restrictive area, whether it's California or maybe somewhere else in the world. Or maybe there's not an automatic law in the book, but you need to be under two inches anyways. I, you know, I don't know where uh, where would that would be like. Consult your lawyer. This is not legal advice. But nonetheless, I mean, it's offering some really nice options, and it is definitely something different. Particularly the half-breed is absolutely weird, and I love seeing weird, because that means a company is thinking and being innovative about some things. And aside from an awful warranty, I gotta be honest with you here, there is really not much wrong with these knives. I like them a lot. I think they're both really excellent. But that said, these are gonna be a little bit more limited in application outside of California. You buy this either because you live in California and want an automatic, or you buy it because, well, you want something that's cute. You want something that's funny. You want to have an automatic knife that you can carry to work and people are going to freak out about. You, 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 that's the kind of reason you would buy this. It's an auto that makes people laugh rather than run in terror to HR. Um, and so that's, that's, a, that's a useful thing. Uh, but I think for a lot of folks, if you're not living in California and you don't have that need, I'm probably going to recommend that you maybe go a little bit bigger. Under two inches is really restrictive in a lot of ways. Um, and so I don't know that I would recommend this knife to you if you don't have those restrictions. But if you do, or if this is appealing to you otherwise, then I think you should absolutely sprint to your local dealer, and I think I can give the half-breed a very wholehearted thumbs up. So uh, there you go. And this, by the way, is going to be staying, the, the, the sprint that is, is going to be staying in my permanent collection, I believe. So I have an automatic knife. I'm moving to California soon. That's why I'm doing this series. Um, but So I have an automatic knife that I can show off, and also because I freaking like it. It's really easy to carry. It's nice. And it, frankly, it's just it's a lot of freaking fun. So on the half-breed, I, I don't quite need that. Little bitch hands have some advantages. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting, that I was able to protect your wallet from making a bad purchase, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.